Good afternoon, sir. Good morning, still, everyone. Thank you for, for joining us. Appreciate you coming here, there. Um, I think it's an exciting event. There are really three reasons that we asked you to, to come. Um, first of all, you know, in a moment, we're going to have, uh, we're going to sign this most recent amendment to the agreement the city has between, um, between the city and Eric Farrell's group uh, regarding Cambrian Rise. This is an amendment of the development agreement that was approved, I believe, unanimously, right? Uh, just uh, uh, yeah. a couple, you know, uh, at not this most recent meeting, but the one before. And the agreement is in the middle of a housing crisis. It is a significant agreement in and of itself. What it does is it raises the previous cap, which put a, a total uh, maximum of 950 homes that could be built on the Cambrian Rise site. And it gets rid of that. And now Eric's plans are to build... Um, as many as 1,050 is yeah. my understanding. And Correct. that's what the agreement yeah. now allows. Um, also um, wanted to make sure that the public fully understood the full extent of the progress we were making on housing here right now. Um, this project, the project behind us is already the largest housing development in the city's history. It is, it is our belief, the largest housing development in, in the state's history. The prior record was in the low 300s. Our city historian, Brian Pine, advises me the North Northgate uh, development farther up the avenue. Eric has already, Eric and his partners have already, and those partners include both nonprofit and for-profit partners, already has completed 316 homes, and there are another 251 homes that are scheduled to open during the course of 2024 in two different buildings. And in a few minutes, we're gonna have an opportunity to go uh, walk around, or at least near, I don't know what you've been able to work out with the subs who are busy there, that uh, we got hard hats, the plan is to be able to get uh, up into them, I hope. I haven't actually done that myself with these <laughs> latest buildings, and I'm excited to see uh, what is there, and I know the public is too. Um, you know, I think sometimes because this project hasn't been accompanied by some of the controversy that uh, some other projects have, the full magnitude and impact of what is happening here gets lost. And uh, I think today's an, an opportunity to just see how much is happening. And then finally, and I've got Cindy White, our parks director here to speak to this. Um, some of the other benefits that go beyond housing, uh, some of the other public benefits are starting to materialize and take shape now as well. The most dramatic example of that is where we're sitting. This is a new city-owned facility that, uh, as you can see, is a historic building that has been wonderfully um, <clears throat> renovated and updated and um, is... Uh, is a new resource for the public and for the city and the city's conservation programs. And Cindy will, will speak to that. This agreement we're signing also uh, commits this guy to um, completing uh, over the next couple of years uh, several important public improvements. There, one is the connection between North Avenue and the old North End here of a uh, public bike path, uh, path uh, down to the the bike path. The, one of the last time we did sort of a master plan when we did the the big bike path renovation several years ago, one of the things that was recognized is that in the old North End in particular, there are limited ways for the public to access the path that is being addressed through this project and it is being addressed as, as part of what the developers are building here. And um, up until now, we have had an agreement to do that, but we, it was impossible to exactly project when the timing would happen. With this agreement, Eric is committing to getting it done by the end of this, the year. End of this year. So it's right here. <laughs> they call it feet to the fire. <laughs> the other commitment here is there are some improvements to the avenue, transportation improvements that um, are being committed to get done uh, in 2020 by October of 2025 and um, why don't I pause there and I don't know if you, I, I you, you actually might be better able to speak to exactly the transportation improvements people might be curious on that 
Um, and, um, you know, I, I, I actually, I did have a couple more things I want to say. Uh, about to hand it over to you. One is, um, Take your I, time. yeah, so the, uh, so again, like if you add all that up, the, the f more than 500 homes that will be completed by the end of this year, the more than 1,000 homes that are projected to be complete by 2029, these public amenities, including this new public building and, and the park space, it's a pretty remarkable project. And it's certainly one of the things I'm most proud about looking back on the last 12 years uh, that we've been able to, to get done and, and, and put in motion to get completed over the, the coming few years. Uh, it, it is only possible, I think, that this project that is there's really little precedent in recent history for it to happen. It really only happened for, for three reasons. One, I want to thank the very skilled city team, big city team, that has worked on this in one way or another. Some of them are the people in the room, Cindy, Brian, and Samantha over at CEDO who have uh, helped manage this development agreement process and the negotiations around it. Um, before them, though, we had uh, Cindy's predecessor, Jesse Bridges, played a, a very important role in the public process that involved that, that got us to the place where this uh, major project could be approved with full support, enduring support on the city council. Um, that, that another key ingredient of this was that we were made a partnership with uh, a local developer who has built trust in this community through decades of delivering on what he said here and and uh um we, we and 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 not only was it a, a partnership with you but with other key partners we don't have here today but i think uh, you know it's important to remember a key part of this the vermont conservation land trust the um, Champlain Housing Trust, and then ultimately the Cathedral Square, uh, key nonprofit partners who have built a good chunk of the, the development that's already built and who um, uh, came in and, and helped, helped communicate to the public why it was so important to do this. And then finally, that's the other key piece of this. This happened because the Burlington public now understands in a way that I don't think we always did really accept as a community that if we want to make good on the promise of housing, that housing really should be a human right, is a human right, that if we want to make good on that promise, we want to deliver on that, um, we've got to build a lot more housing and we need to make the public decisions that are necessary to, to make that possible. And uh, we did it here. It's worth holding on to that um, and thinking about that as we have big public decisions coming down the line with respect to the South End before the end of March. It is my hope that we are able to put in, we are, we are going to put in front of the, the council a the first of what will be a number of agreements, but the first agreement to build a project comparable in scale to this one on what is currently very underutilized public parking lots. Um, we, we, so we need to kind of replicate this success there. We need to replicate this success on this other partnership that we are starting with, with Eric and others on the gateway block. We need to replicate this partnership with UVM up with the major parcels uh, of underutilized land that they own and where they want to be, where they want to build thousands of student beds. We, this, I think it's, it's good to reflect on what we've done here at a moment when we have some other big decisions before us. And so thank you, Eric, for, uh, thank you. for agreeing to, to, to host everyone today. And now I'll let you say a few words if you'd like. <laughs> <laughs> so we've been at it for 10 years. This process started in 2014. We purchased the land from Burlington College originally in 2015. And the mayor has been, um, a partner the mayor and the city has been a partner every step of the way been very supportive and I don't think we could have gotten to where we are today without that support and and through his leadership we've also had the support of various uh, city departments including parks and DPW and we've had to deal with all the departments and they've all been very cooperative um, I've been working for uh, half a century in Burlington and shouldn't have admit that admit that but um, <laughs> But it's been um, it's been a heavy lift, but it's been enjoyable, and uh, so 
Uh, I'm looking forward to completing Cambrian Rise. If all goes well, we'll complete it in the next four or five years, assuming we don't have another COVID event. Um, a brief word on North Avenue improvements. North Avenue, um, we conceived of the idea, we're gonna build a, um, a traffic light intersection uh, in, uh, in North Avenue and Cambrian Way, um, but we thought it was important to widen the street so that we could put uh, on-street parking on the west side of North Avenue for two reasons. One, uh, there, there is no parking on North Avenue in this strip, and also we thought that it would create more of a neighborhood between Cambrian Rise and the homes that are across the street, and it also tends to uh, slow traffic down so that this this stretch of North Avenue isn't an arterial road, uh, isn't perceived that way, doesn't function that way. It's more of a, of a you're driving through a neighborhood. Um, so we're looking forward to completing those improvements next year and building uh, all the housing we can as fast as we can. So. Great. That's my speech. Well done. No, thank, thank you. you. Um, and now, Cindy, um, I'm hoping you can uh, share with folks, what, what is this place? How, how is it being used? How will it be used in the future? Sure. What should the public know about it? Great, so, we, um, so welcome to what we call the Redstone Cottage. Um, the cottage was built in the early 1900s as a home for the doctor who uh, worked at the sanitarium that is no longer on the site. The city took control of it in 2016 and um, with a generous gift um, at the time from John Hale, um, it allowed us to acquire the land um, money towards um, the path that Eric will be building, and then also seed money for the restoration of the cottage. Um, and not only um, did we get money from John Hale, but we also received money from the Conservation Legacy Fund. Um, most recently, we were incredibly excited because we got uh, money from the ARPA funds that allowed us to finish the project. We also received money from the Vermont Housing Conservation Board, our community partners such as Cathedral Square and um, Champlain Housing Trust and then other private donors that stepped up um, to assist. And hidden under there is a beautiful Catherine Monstring print um, that was made possible by one of our donors. Um, so our conservation team, um, as the mayor noted, works out of here. They have offices on the second floor, they have garage space um, on the lower floor, and then there's a building out back here. And I really want to touch on some of the highlights of the work that they do, because it's just incredible work that they do in the city. If any of you are skaters or no skaters, you're familiar with Arthur Park and the Sea Caves. And the conservation team um, has made that possible. It's been a bit of a lackluster winter, um, but they've made the most of it. They um, shovel all the paths that are down there. Um, they leave up at the top in a box um, some uh, little crampons so it gets a little icy. You've got something to put on your shoes to make it easy to get up and down. So that's one example of the work the conservation team does. Um, in addition, they oversee, uh, we have about 750 garden plots in the city, um, and we are mid-February, and there's only 5% of those plots uh, remaining open, so they're well used, and with some of the bond dollars that we have, we'll be able to do some expansions at Tommy Thompson at Callahan. Um, and then, in addition to, uh, we have a new tool trailer, which is kind of a unique piece. Uh, we got money from the Vogue grant that's out back if anybody wants to see it. And that tool trailer will be made available to all of our community land managers. It's filled with tool, tool trails because in climate change, all the precipitation that's happening, we have to make our trails more resilient. And so that tool trailer, again, another program that the conservation program oversees. Uh, and if you have a chance, I really encourage folks to check out other very unknown conservation lands. We've got the Calvary Maple Wetlands. We have the uh, Crescent Woods. Um, folks, many folks know of Arms Forest. We just received that, um, some additional land for there from the Elks. So again, those are sort of some of our quiet conservation lands that the conservation team oversees. And I just want to note that they use a lot of volunteers, many community partners to do that incredible work. And we hope that the community be ready to come visit here. We look to be opening in um, March this space. We'll have it available for private rentals, but we'll also have it available for the community to stop by We've got a computer set up. We'll have some reference materials here. And um, hopefully by then, our little electric fireplace will be in too, just to make a very uh, cozy space to, to hang out. So we were really excited about that. Eric, I know there's a little heartburn from having let go of this space, but I think you're very pleased uh, in the long run that we've had this incredible community spot. So thank you for, for sharing sharing the space next door. No, so this is an awesome facility. I wanted to put my offices here, but <laughs> got talked out of it. <laughs> 
Great. Um, well done, Cindy. Uh, the um, just to just amplify one of the points you made there that um, people who have been kind of covering what's going on in the city. It, this is uh, just to to kind of expand upon it. The ARPA fu funds, there was a, a council commitment of $2 million of the federal funds that we received from the American um, <clears throat> Recovery Act that were um, put into what we call community infrastructure projects. And so the Moran project that we talked about last week, that has uh, $600,000 of those community infrastructure funds. This had another $250,000 allocation um, in the... I don't think we have a date for it quite yet, but we also made, uh, we invested some of those funds in the kiosk project and City Hall Park. So that's part of the kind of storyline here too that uh, will be coming in, in, the, in the coming year. And then there is a Roosevelt Park mm -hmm. investment as well, which planning work is underway. Right. And, 405 and 405 Pine, the BCA facility, the expansion there also got a significant investment. Um, I think, why don't we pause there before we sign these documents? We'll do that in a minute, but our, before we do that and then go on the tour, uh, are there any questions for us? Yeah, so just to clarify some numbers, 251 units to open this year, or did you say 500? No, th um, 134 will open in June. Uh -huh. One, There's two buildings under construction. Yeah, do you wanna show people on, oh. on this uh, kind of? And this might orient people as well for up there. So to orient you, this Liberty House, of course. So this building is under construction, mm -hmm. 134 apartments. It'll open in June. Uh, this building being developed by uh, Scott Ireland is 117 units. That's scheduled for late summer, early fall. And that between the two is the 250 units, in addition to the 315 or 16 that are the, the ones that are occupied is Liberty House, former orphanage, this building here, uh, Cathedral Square, and Shapeland Housing Trust. And then after we open these two buildings, we'll have one, two, three, four more buildings to, to, to construct over the next four to five years. I want to make sure people see where, where we are on that right here, just to where you folks. So we are in this, um, the smallest building on the, <laughs> the Stone House. <laughs> So the amendments to the development plan that you're signing today are sort of just the raising the cap to 1,050. Are there any other points to the amendment that I missed? Out? Those two point things that I mentioned about putting dates on the on when the the the. Um, commitments that the developer has made around the bike path connection. Uh, that is called out here to be done um, this calendar year. And then the, the transportation improvements that Eric described, that, that is also memorialized here as being committed to be done by October, the end of October of 2025. Um, yeah. Those and are the main, I think those are really the, 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 the main, the, yeah. the, the substantive changes. Can you explain what you did at the city council meeting about how, why, um, just the other changes that are sort of inherent in, in that moving away from some of the commercial uses that probably would have had a more uh, impact, traffic impact uh, potentially, how we ended up. Yeah, know, yeah. Well, um, so when. The original development agreement, we had a cap of 770. Nobody can seem to recall why we had that cap, but <laughs> it was a cap. And then a couple of years, I think 2020, that cap was was increased to 950. And at that time, we eliminated a, a substantial amount of commercial space in favor of residential space. And the net uh, uh, the net change of that resulted in almost I think it was zero or slightly less impacts on traffic, which people are always concerned about. Um, and the, the same 14 buildings that we originally got approved. So today we're not increasing the cap; we're eliminating the cap because the underlying zoning district doesn't have a they don't measure development by density, they measure it by floor area ratio and other technical requirements. So there'll be no cap. Uh, we're going to end up at around 1,050 um, and and we're going to further uh, reduce the amount of uh, non-residential space 
so that again we think the the net result will be no uh, change or impact on on the currently approved uh, level of traffic and no increase in the number of buildings that was my next question why have a cap on how much a developer can build you mean why you know, eric yeah. said it is is um you know, I've been here through through all of this. I do think there has been sort of a shifting sense of priority and um, uh, concerns o over the the period. When we first started talking about this development, the idea of having 700 homes here, 770 homes, was sort of a shocking number, and uh, the agreement that we got to. Um, which is sort of outside of what the zoning allowed, put that limitation on it. And frankly, I think it's, yeah. it's what you envisioned building at the time too. It seemed like it was gonna be a sufficient amount. Um, the market has changed, the economy has changed, the sense of crisis around housing supply has changed. And um, in the early successes with this project, the addition of large buildings here without the sky falling has, um, I think, sort of changed public opinion on uh, on what would on, on how to think about this. And now you have. I, I don't think it would have been possible six, seven years ago when the first agreement was signed to um, to to sign a document that didn't put a cap on it and just relied on the zoning. It, now it is yeah. possible with the the, the public uh, support for housing. Interestingly enough, the underlying zoning at the time was in the waterfront district allowed a little over 800 units, but there was a lot of concern about the history of the property and we, we had uh, countless numbers of public meetings uh, outreach to the public, uh, in addition to just the, the required meetings to, for planning and zoning. And so I think that the response to that was, let's cap it somewhere, and we ended up at 770. I'm not sure of the magic of that number. Um, but I think as time has gone on and we've built out, I think the project has been more well received. There's more you know, heightened demand for housing. And so I, I think the time is right now to to acknowledge that housing is pretty important and we ought to build every unit we can build here. This might be a stretch, but do you think this might incentivize or excite other developers who want to build high density housing to see that the cap has sort of been? I don't know that the cap has anything to do with it. I think the, I think the, de the insatiable demand for housing ought to be enough incentive for, de for developers. Although we're in a challenging market because rates are higher, construction costs are significantly higher, and so it's uh, you know it's it's difficult to accomplish. And I couldn't have accomplished it without partnering with the city in a lot of ways, and certainly partnering with uh, the local housing nonprofits, which I've done for 20 years. But it's very I couldn't have done it without without these three this triangle of partners. It never would have happened. Okay. Yeah. Okay. I, yeah. I just add to that, I, I, I do think, I mean, I think your question, you're kind of onto an important point, which is maybe the sort of technical uh, decision on the specific cap to this parcel, you know, that may not have so much broader significance to other parcels, but I think the general um, change in the city of Burlington's um, uh, um, position and prioritization of housing has been, I, I think it, you know, I think as a former housing developer, it's one of the most significant things that I brought to the table as the mayor over the last 12 years. I knew we had uh, a major housing problem and that we, uh, that we needed to find a way to build a lot more housing. I had had the experience of it being a 10-year process to build the project just down the street from here. It's, you can walk here, the Packer Lofts project. I started working on it in 2003, and it finally we were finally had our, all of our approvals and our financing uh, 10 years later because of how subjective and problematic the, the, the zoning was at the time. It has been a major priority of mine for a decade to make our zoning much more predictable, to make it much more supportive of housing getting built, of reducing the possibilities for uh, just sort of one or two people who disagree with the community decision to build more housing to effectively be able to veto a project through um, uh, 
holding up projects for long periods of time through the permitting process. Um, and by um, being adding to the city team, people like, like Samantha that could make sure the city was doing its part of the job on these complicated public-private projects like this. So um, I do think as a result of all that, there is a much greater interest and appetite for housing to be built in the city of Burlington right now uh, than there was before. I think what we have tried to do and the broader shifts that have happened in Vermont and in America mean that that is going to endure and will outlive this administration. We certainly hope that's the case. We think we've kind of baked, we've built it into the way our processes work now. Um, uh, and I certainly think that the, six, the fact that Eric has been able to build more than 500 homes here um, uh, other developers will look to as like, yeah, you know, you actually can get something done and you can successfully build housing in this city. And, and I, I hope people do see that, do see that in today's, in the successes we're talking about today. What, what's the breakdown on affordable? I know Lord Tide is one. What's, you know, of the 1050 that you're planning, what's the total affordable number do you think in the end? Uh, so rough numbers is going to be 600 uh, plus or minus rentals, 450 home ownership units. And between those two, there'll be a little over 200 or about probably 20% of them will be perpetually affordable, both for sale and for rent. Okay. And a big chunk of those are in Born Tide already, or are there more to be built as well? Was, there's more to be built. Okay. Yeah. And they're a big chunk in the yeah. two. The, it's, yeah. the two buildings we're right next to here have the senior prod. What senior project is one on the avenue and then the family project. Yeah. And that's how many homes between the two of them? 146 between between those two buildings and Champlain Housing Trust is going to build another building of 70 units, 40 of which will be uh, perpetually affordable rentals and 30 of which will be perpetually affordable home ownership units. And one thing we talked about at the council and at the press conference last week about city places because of the shift on that project where the developers there are building the inclusionary zoning units on their own instead of partnering with CHT, which was the original plan that has freed up CHT capacity and some of the public subsidies that were committed to that project. The plan is to try to use them as part of the, the additional units to be built here. Do you want to say, can you say anything more about those? I, I don't um, No, except that they were, we, we signed an agreement with them. They were very interested in building here. They're going to build probably next year. And, and every time they do a project, it, it's a multitude of financing, you know, uh, sources. Look at that, Very you did have something to say about huh? that. Look at that, you did have something to say about <laughs> You actually yeah. just announced that you signed an agree with them. I wasn't, I didn't know that. I didn't tell you that. <laughs> I knew it was in the works. So yeah. it wasn't, no, 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 we signed an agreement. So, and they're coming. One million the city is a partner in that as well, and that we have already committed, there's already been a council vote to put um, almost a million dollars of our uh, housing ARPA funds towards that project. Yeah. And when, can you point again to where, where is, where is the CHT, the new affordable building going? It's, going? it's a little hard to see in here, but it's this building right here. Okay. It's behind the one that we're opening in uh, June. Right okay. Right so. In this picture, it's here. It's a little bit different. Is, it, is that, has oh, yeah. this plan changed or is it? No, that no, plan? that's, that's oh, it. H. That's it, yeah. yeah. It's H. So it's that oh, building. It's H. Building H. Yeah. Oh, okay. I see, yep. Yeah. So this one will open this year. June. And this one will Built next from CHT, yeah. and this will include the homeowner. And it's buildings C and M that we're going to go visit. Uh, well, we're not going to get into M. We're not going to get in there. I don't. That's not my building, but we're going to go into C. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. And we can see M. Yeah. You All can right. see it. All right. <laughs> <laughs> just, just one other question about the road point uh, for the road project. Obviously, traffic's as you know is a big concern coming up and down. Does that include, I understand the parking element, are you gonna have a turning lane or something to avoid some of that or is it really just, you know? I think, there's, I think there's turning lanes in, in both directions. Mm -hmm. um, the primary entrance is going to be the southerly entrance yeah. um, because 80 or 85% of the traffic uh, comes and goes to Cambrian from the south and only about 15 or 20% from the north. Um, so there's two entrances, it's a loop road it goes down and across and then comes back up. But I think most of the traffic will come and go at the traffic light intersection. Great. Yeah. Um, I have one final question. 
how many max people do you think this place can house? When it's complete? Yeah. It'll, if we have 1,050 units, I would guess that the occupancy, the population here will be between 15 and 1,800 people. Okay, thank you. That's a guess. Okay, yes, I'll write that down. Because <laughs> it, you know, and it will, I mean, it depends on just how many, what the makeup of exactly what gets built, but also how people choose to occupy it, whether they. Exactly, it'll be, you know, it'll certainly average more than one person per unit. Uh, whether it'll average, you know, probably one and a half is a good guess. That'd be 15, 1,600 people. Um, last question. Can our drone team come with us and drone and take videos of the property? Of course. Okay, sweet. Yeah. <laughs> All right, Andy, he said As long as I'm not in. <laughs> <laughs> uh, it would be safer if we launched uh, from the, the parking lot on the far side. Uh, so uh, that's right. That's right. Exciting, great. I don't know if you've had a press conference covered by a drone team before. <laughs> All right, um, I think I think we should do this, Eric. Let's sign it, here. All right, I've got two copies. Um, here's a pen. What's the date today? 15th, day after Valentine's Day. 15th, oh, I should have known that, right? <laughs> yeah, you should have. Did, did you screw that up? Yes, I did. I did get my wife a card. <laughs> Me too. I went to Market 32 to get Valentine's Day chocolates and all they had were Easter chocolates. <laughs> <laughs> wow. I know. That's uh Yeah. That's, see, that's me. I don't sign with a mayor. No, so, right? Unless okay, you're uh, running a stealth campaign. Do uh, <laughs> you have a notary here? I'm, I'm hoping we do. We, we, we will. Jeez, Eric. <laughs> All right. Mr. Mayor, is that really your signature? It is. <laughs> and perfected. For 12 years. 12 years or something. Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. All right. Eric, it's a pleasure. I appreciate the help. Con Thank congratulations you. on what you've done so far. We're Thank counting you. on you to deliver a lot more. Thank you. I, I'm Great. doing my best.